Welcome to Bowls Presents Tabletop Ready Tips for the Rest of Us, where I, your host, Adam Harry, take you the quick and dirty of how to get your stuff tabletop ready. On today's edition, we have the Firestorm Redoubt. As you can see here, I already have it built and put together, so we can skip that step. Uh, but uh, I haven't glued these down or anything. I did glue them together, but not down. So, as you can see here, uh, it's ready for priming. But, before I get to that step, let's talk about what you'll need today. All right, folks, as you can see here, I'm back from getting the priming done. And just like, you know, skipping breakfast is a bad idea, skipping the priming stuff is also a terrible idea. It's very important to get good coverage on this stuff because um, this is the foundation to make sure all the other paints stick. So now I'm going to take it out back again and hit it with some gray. Uh, do, again, the apex highlighting with that. Just want to shoot it from a different angle up top just to kind of get um, this area in the front and on the sides covered uh, a little bit to give it some depth of view and then uh, we'll go we'll come back after that's done all right everybody we're back I just uh, went out back and sprayed this and brought it in real quick again did the apex spray I didn't cover everything in the gray primer again this is supposed to cause a gradient a little bit of natural shading in the spray as you can see from this here uh, las cannon Icarus lad cannon qual las cannon um, there is still black showing you can see there um, but from this angle it looks more covered so again it's just to show better gradient same deal here so there's still some dark spots which is what I want I want that natural lighting to come through uh, the natural shading to come through because of how I sprayed it so um, as you can see it's the back and everything like that so again from up top it looks pretty good coverage but when you look at it straight on it's different so that's what the effect you're going for so next up I'm gonna hit it with some base paint all right, as you can see here, I'm done with the. Mo I'm just kidding. Done with the base coat part. Again, this part you can be a little sloppy with. I didn't really take any care to try to make it straight lines or anything. This is just to get the metallic parts brown because, like Goat Boy taught me, it's rusty because it's dirty. So from here on out, what I'm going to do is go to the next step, which is dry brushing bulk and metal on top of this. As you can see here, I've taken the browns and dry brushed the silver on top of that. I haven't touched anything else. Um, the cool part about this step is that the browns should still be visible uh, when you kind of rotate them all around. You can still see some of the browns. The black wash is the next step and that's going to actually help kind of spread over that and even everything out to give it a really cool look. I'm also going to ink the flat surfaces of the concrete here and here and on the sides. But I'm also going to, once I complete that step, I'm going to then use a, um, like a Q-tip or something to, to wipe off some of the excess so that it's on the recesses and not just sitting on top of the surface to give it a more natural shape. We are back in black after the black ink wash. As you can see here, I've got these two I wanted to show off. Oh, pro tip, I took off the wedding ring because when you're painting with ink, you probably don't want to get that dirty. So um, I'm back, I wanted to show these two things off. This one's been inked, this one has not. You can see how much darker this one is, how the browns have been blended with that silver uh, to kind of give it that dirty, rusty look that uh, Go Boy taught me about. So again, that's the point of this whole step. So I've got that done. Next is a touch-up step. I'm gonna go through on the concrete with gray and uh, kind of clean everything up on the base, on this um, whole model and on the guns. And then um, after that, I'm gonna line stuff. But the next step is going to be to clean stuff up. We are back after the cleanup step. Uh, all I did with the guns, I just kind of—I finally painted the tips black because I figured um, I can repaint those later on. But just to kind of get those out of the way, so those are done. I've also gone back through again, cleanup step. Went back in, filled in some of the gray. I added a little bit of character there, as you can see. Put in the O1 on the front of the bunker, um, just kind of as a unit number. But I went back in and cleaned up some of the gray in the areas on the base um, and uh, kind of repainted some of that. But now. Here is the secret sauce. Here's why you've been watching this video for the past four and a half minutes. This is the reason, I'm about to give you guys back all that time I just used up. So, Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens. You can get a whole set of these for about the price of four to five pots of GW paint. Uh, six of them in all. It's, it's Look for these online, Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens, the Indian ink pens. What these bad boys are, are felt tip or, art, or soft tip pens that you, you can use for lining. Um, it's going to take your lining down from, I don't know, an hour, two hours to line this whole model. Probably less than five minutes because I can probably blow through this hole real quick. But the real trick with this, using these pens is you actually want to go with the lighter grays because then you can get, get multiple, if you want to make it darker, you just go over multiple times. 
if you start with black, you're not gonna have anywhere to shade up from, it's just black. But if you go with the gray, it starts gray, then it goes dark gray, et cetera, et cetera. But again, you can get a whole set of these for pretty cheap at your local art store, stuff like that. Um, it's gonna be a super worth the investment, super worth the time, and I, I guarantee you're gonna be happy with the results. So, all right, that's what we're gonna do, and then I'll be back with the final shot when I'm done. So the final look again, I'm done lining it. It literally took me about five minutes to do the entire model uh, with one set. I, I might go back and do a little bit darker, but as you can see here, uh, hopefully the lighting, you can see the, the dark lines there. Um, the great part about the pit end, the pit pens is because they are so uh, precision, I mean, you can get really straight lines. You don't have to do anything fancy like taping stuff off, taping stuff off or going back over. So um, I've lined the entire model. You can kind of see uh, the lining there. So. Um, yeah, this is how you get your stuff tabletop ready super quick. Get some pit pens. Big Red's entire Death Guard army has been lined with pens before, so or is, was lined with pens. So, and that looks really good. Um, so yeah, this is Adam Harry with another tabletop ready from Bowls. Um, have any questions, comments? You know, drop them in the comment section. Um, Go us a like, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let me know what else you want to see. Again, Adam Harry from Bowls signing off. Have a good. One.